Buongiorno! Buongiorno! <laughs> uh, hi everyone, this is Kikesh Chat. I am Shirley. Christy, what's good? And we are here to review Martin Eden. I said it right, right? <laughs> Martin like, Eden yeah. is a bon film. Look at that, she's speaking Italian. So, yes, um, the. <laughs> the film came out this weekend and it is a movie I wanted to see because the star is an actor I just recently started watching so I was like let's watch it it's a foreign film it's uh, Italian with English subtitles um, so yeah this is our review of Martinetti it is directed by Petro Marcello Marcello <laughs> If you don't know about our reviews, I'm going to mess up so many names, and I'm sorry about that because I'm not good with names, so that's going to happen. You got A for effort, though. Yeah, I, I tried. Sorry. <laughs> um, yes. So this is a film that came out technically last year, but it's coming to the U.S. now to, like, independent theaters and mostly, like, virtual cinemas as well because you know how so basically some theaters are not open, especially with independent cinemas. Um, they don't have the backing or the funding to really open that much. So they're doing virtual cinemas where you could like buy tickets to see movies through any the theater, independent theaters that you want to see the movie in. And like, I think 50% go to it. I think so through, um, basically the sh distributor of the foreign, of this foreign film, uh, Martin Eden, they did distribute foreign indie documentary and classic films. And so when you watch this film through, I don't know how to say their production, the distributor company, it's Kino. Lorber. Lorber, Kino Lorber, thank you. And so basically you go on there, you, you look for Martin Eden and then you, it's just $12. So that's not a lot, especially um, for in the like pendant films. Like we thought yeah. you're gonna pay like 30 bucks. I mean on Disney Plus you have to pay for Mulan like 30 bucks. I know. So, so it steal. was yeah so $12 I mean it, it's something but it's not like a lot a lot compared to other films and again you are supporting these independent cinemas who you know don't have the backings like AMC and oh my god was it Rego and you know Cineworld and all that stuff. Um, it, of, backing because they have their chains of course so um yeah but that doesn't mean they're not struggling they are struggling especially the workers they're really struggling but these independent cinemas like again they don't really have much backing so so this is great i mean you know so yeah you could go we're gonna link down below their website so you could check out the film and all that stuff and support an independent cinema it's only twelve dollars and um i think this is a film to really spend twelve dollars on it's a really damn uh damn good film it's an amazing film i thought you know yeah we just had to start off and say that it <laughs> we was, just yeah we started off give, give the synopsis though so, so let me give the synopsis i came up like we're with just a saying review, that like, it's worth 12 dollars <laughs> yes okay? but keep on watching to see our review because we have really more stuff to say that we have um basically there's some things that i had issues with i'm not gonna lie there are things I but have But let's save that with. for the end. So I'm going to save that for the end. So basically the synopsis is that it's an adaption of a novel from Jack London. And um, they set it in Italy, of course. And it's following this young uh, working class sailor called Martin Eden. And um, he meets, he saves the brother of this rich bougie family. Um, and he meets the sister, Elena, and so he falls in love with Elena, like, right, in love on first sight. <laughs> and so he wants to be part of that world, and he wants to, I guess, educate himself, self-taught. And he, he um, starts to read a lot of books, and by reading a lot of books, he aspires to be a writer, and that is his dream. And of course, while he's um, striving for this artistic dream, he is met with not only the pressures of uh, being good enough for Elena because of her family and how they have this outlook on him and that uh, the poor society as a whole. Um, there's basically this uprising of uh, political uh, force uh, 
which is socialism, I, I guess, that's what it is, um, coming forth. And, and then he starts writing about it because he meets this mentor that tells him to do that um, called, what was the mentor's name? I think Bruce something. Yes, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> You want me? Yeah, yeah, okay, there it is. Bruce Presenden. <laughs> Bruce Presenden. And so, yeah, so through that, he's learning these political learnings and, and becoming a famous writer, but how much is that eating away at him? Something that he wanted. And, you know, so yeah. That's basically the film. <laughs> this is a out to so Chrissy, what you wanted to get into. Um, I don't know. Uh, first, I have to say that the director did a brilliant job because he wrote it, right? The director wrote the script. I don't think so. I really, I didn't look that up. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I thought he also wrote it, but we can, He could have wrote it. We'll check of, that and clear that which up down then, below. We'll <laughs> put it down below. Sorry, I didn't write it in so, my notes. Um, did it, he did a very brilliant job of kind of giving this story, well, the writer did, of this this idea of like human nature and human condition and how each one influences the other and uh luca marianelli who plays martin who, who, who plays martin Eden, um i have to say shirley you said it really well um gave a tremendous performance oh yeah <laughs> so much so that it, it it's like when you watch a film and the character just kind of comes to life in that story and you're just taken away with it um, it is his and film. As if you were actually brought into the story yourself, and it was just, I don't know, it was just a magnificent experience watching it and watching him perform it. And so. Can I bring something up for a second? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it's interesting because, yeah, he, like I said, he carries the film. Um, it's weird because you're like, you are rooting for him because, as you know, we we're part of the working class and we know how it feels and all that so uh like how people look down on you if you're from certain areas or certain place or where you work as well and you know if you're not you don't feel good enough because people look at you like oh you're still doing that type of job or something like that and so you like you know you root for him but at the same time because of his ambitions he becomes very egotistical you know and you so it's like oh wait a second but you still you're like hold on but you're still following him in a right. sense of like you want to follow him that because i think luca has that pull of through his acting that you just want to follow him yeah. wherever he's going yeah that's what i felt i agree with you totally because when you first start the story and he meets elena i felt like his lines alone he almost sounded like a romantic philosopher. Right. Like, it was just pure poetry and the way he spoke to her. And then all of a sudden, he went from that to this egotistic, right. narcissistic, and very, almost bitter, in a sense. Like, oh, well, very bitter. Well, and then just really throwing out the harsh realities of life and how he saw the world mm -mm. again. So, but it was, it was definitely... An, entertaining experience and you had uh, referenced after the movie that he reminded you of a certain actor and I totally agree. Oh, Jimmy Stewart. Now, here's a funny thing. Oh, uh, Jamie Stewart. Who's that? Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy Stewart. Yeah. Um, he's uh, James he, Stewart. That, but it's, they call him Jimmy Stewart, right? Oh, okay. This, I don't yeah. know. That's a, I, <laughs> I always thought it was Jimmy Stewart. Oh, but I don't know. Maybe before you but move I thought they on. Him, okay, maybe he's I'm James Stewart. He's an actor from the 30s. Yes, that, you know. And is. if you have never seen a movie from this guy, oh wait, hold on, they have seen a movie. They play this movie every year. Every Christmas. Every Christmas. <laughs> oh, damn! <laughs> Dang it! Uh, that that Christmas movie where he's like he wants to die. <laughs> exactly. How do we not know that one? It's on the tip of our tongue. Uh, yeah, I forgot it, but, but we'll, we'll put it anyways, down below. The movie, that movie's good, but the movie I want to recommend is Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. It's on Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. I think it's two ninety nine. It is so worth it. I mean, I grew up with classic films. I have learned, um, I love a lot of classic uh, actors and their style. And this Luca Marinelli, I don't know where, 
like he came out from and we know he's from Italy but oh my gosh <laughs> thank you thank you thank you because his acting style not only in this film and other films I've seen him in is just amazing because we saw I him can't in say anything else yeah we saw but, him in the old guard right and he plays Nikki and he plays really damn well in there but he's a supporting role and when you watch, go check out Old Guards on and, Netflix. And Gina Prince Pipe would directed it. Gina um, uh, and then there's Trust on Hulu. He plays Primo. He play, it's a, a TV show about the Italian mafia, mafia kidnapping uh, the Getty grandchild. Grandchild. Yeah. Um, the way he you see those different performances and the way he plays Nikki is very controlled. And then Primo is like kind of like little bit like crazy but here it's like very passionate you know with martin eden and and it's just so interesting to see the difference i guess you call it that's acting when i said jimmy stewart or james stewart or whatever, whatever his name. <laughs> um um uh, basically, what I meant is that no, he's not exactly like an American actor. I'm American, so I'm going to compare that in the sense. That's why. I'm not trying to say that he's exactly the same. He reminded me of him because I saw that kind of like that raw, in the end, when he's talking, when he's already famous as a writer, that raw passion of bitterness and just like... Um, so, uh, James Stewart, in the end... When he's talking uh, in, was it Washington? Going to Washington? I forgot the name right now. <laughs> and he's talking to Congress and all that stuff. I felt that passion as well. So that's why I connected I just, from that two scenes. That's why I, that's why I was connecting in a sense yeah. with oh. the acting. Uh, yeah, I agree. And then also for me, James Sue is one of my favorite actors from way back when. and uh, <laughs> And I find him great because he's captivating oh yes let's go back to martin eden because this is the, the review for that so um the the way the director uses old footage is amazing i never really see films use old footage like yeah, that he used a lot of archival footage um super 16 i saw oh okay and like negatives and all that stuff yeah and he it looked also amazing is, color enhanced a lot of the negatives and stuff and you can notice that too to kind of mm -hmm. give it this a similar look to the actual film and the film itself it looks like it was shot on film and right. not digitally we were honestly i couldn't really i couldn't look up that information too much like i didn't know if the actual footage with martin edding the actors and all the you know, were actual film or digital but i know that the film was put together digitally Right, and we were talking about how it had this timeless feel feel of it, like if it, it was very um, um, very like fairy tale, but the word was romanticized in like how in the sense of yeah. how it's shot, yeah, and and timeless, even yeah. though it looks like it's like the forties or fifties. Right. I'm assuming, but I, I don't really know. Like but um, it was just interesting how it was shot because technically it's kind of like. Uh, like a princess and pauper type of story of a love story, but like it has a tragedy in the end, right? In the right, sense, right. I hope I'm using that right. <laughs> no, you are, you are. So and, and so for all you know, just to throw this in there for all filmmakers out there, mm -hmm. you know, um, the director actually used archival footage because of his budget. He didn't have a big. Uh, well, oh, I don't know. In, I don't want to use these words that he didn't have a big budget, but to help his budget, I guess he right. used a lot of archival figures. Footage. That's great, and you know you use the resources that you can get, and definitely, and yeah. you can make amazing things like in this film. Um, there's also the th it's a political film. Again, we were talking about socialism. That was the big thing with the uprising for the labor workers. I, I'm assuming that's what, yeah. what they were talking about. Yeah. Um, and so this is where the part where I felt like I couldn't connect with, in a sense, like because you, I mean, it's no, there's no clear. Um, line drawn of to what social political turmoil they're talking about aside from the fact that they're fighting for socialism right. and so it was kind of a little challenging for me to kind of like understand what was going on when the sense in that sense but then I kind of had to break apart and realize that um, the picture wasn't political it was really to show a man in a time of 
political turmoil. Mm. Wow. That's how I saw it, but, yeah. I could see that. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Because they didn't really, um, like, tell you what really was going on, in a sense. Right. Because I guess they wanted that timeless feel of not knowing what time it was, and mm. from what I'm interpreting, interpreting from the film. Um, yeah, because... Yeah, because he's more what we noticed. What he's he was more uh, an individual. Yeah, in he believed sense. in individualism. individualism. Yeah, like you know the people, the own. I guess you make what you have in a sense. Yeah. You make your own way. Yeah. Where socialism is about the community in the sense of having the power. Where you know with capitalism, it's like big, you know, corporations having that power. So there's the difference. So so he wasn't really the funny thing is like he wasn't for socialism, but then they thought he was because right, right. <laughs> they saw him. But there. you know, I you thought know? the way they made the film, in a sense, like he had a challenge with that. You know, like in this environment where a lot of the people he was coming across were into socialism, or at least his best friend was, and you know, yeah, yeah, him trying to like stand and, out and be, you know, I'm an individual, and, and then. Roos, uh, Roos, I think I'm saying the mentor yeah. that he meets, uh, another writer who who was the socialist, um, was telling him to write about these things, <laughs> and, you know, write about porn stuff, like be for something and not just be a bish, a bi- uh, have that ambition to be a writer, uh. which is what he wanted because he wanted to be with Elena, but then Elena sees that socialist stuff, and then you know it all breaks apart and all that stuff, and then his life. He gets what he wants to get, you know, like yeah. of the famous writer. But in the end, is it like a cautionary tale of like you get what you want when you're only thinking about yourself, but when you're not thinking about other people, it's like your life is empty. Yeah, you know, and that's what I got. His Perfectly life was sad. I yeah, his so. life was empty, and that's what happened. You know, the tragedy of what happens in the end happens, you know. You know, he wasn't happy. Even though he got everything in a sense of what he wanted out of the ambition of being a writer. Yeah. You know, yeah, the Lena thing. That <laughs> and, then, and then here's the thing, where they really in love. Which, right. like, how, th- that was the thing that bothered or me. was he in love with who she was? Because right. Because he wanted to become um, part of that Part group. of that world. Part of that, that world, group, yeah. yes. That society. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, so I don't, th- that is, in- that's another interpretation to look at. Um, another thing was that I think the female or the woman roles, you know, the, the, the roles in, in what they had, I, they should have been developed more. I don't think they were developed, you know? They were just there for Martin Eden to, like, you know, treat not well, you know? <laughs> he doesn't treat them good in the sense of, like, even though Elena, you know, she's she's a very privileged person, and there is a part where he shows her what he writes, the sadness and everything, and when he starts becoming a writer, and she's like, why you write happy things? Because she lives in this bubble. So that's all she sees. So when he's showing her the, 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 what life is like for him and a lot of people, you know, he's doing forcefully, which isn't nice. You know, it isn't good that he's forced, like, taking her to these parts. But at the same time, it's like, how do you show a privileged person who lives in their bubble and won't get out of it? Like, hey, this bad, like, we live, we go through a lot of bad stuff, or we live through a lot of bad stuff, or a lot of these communities don't have the resources when they should be getting these resources and all that stuff. I don't know. Yeah, no, I thought the film showed that really well in the the reality and the struggle of life. Yeah, I just wish they showed Elena's um, feelings more. I, like I said, the female characters, the woman characters, should have had more to do. Especially why why was she in love with him? Well, you know, because they just automatically like just fell in love like well, why because he was a good looking ass <laughs> dude. like he was a good looking man at, which i could see i could see she but ran also away like, with his she, words his i guess words so and also and she was a pretty romance. young woman as well and so it could be that i think so yeah you're right because he was really poetic with her and stuff and very intense yeah <laughs> um but then there was the other uh female character um what was her name i i don't know but she was non-existent practically uh he Come on, it was something. Uh, I forgot her name. I can't say it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Ma- oh, Margaret. Uh, yeah. 
Mar- Margarita. Margarita. Yeah. Margarita. Yeah, yeah, that's her. Margarita. Yeah. Um, her character was like kind of non-existent too. He, was, she was just the other girl. Um, that he was like, all right, let's go together. Cause he was sad though <laughs> about Lena. It was. <laughs> Like, she didn't have a voice, really, in the end when they, you know, when everything falls apart. Uh, so, it was like, okay, I mean, she kind of does something dirty, too. But, like, in a sense, she still, she should have, you know, that doesn't mean anything. She still should have had agency and a voice, and voice to say something. Like, and you some, know, and I know it's lines. Martin Eden's, like, and you know, story and he's the lead, but it, they should have had more It would have been more character uh, uh, and more to yeah. say. Yeah. Because then the movie would have been better even better and we're even talking better. About better and the movie's but like really baby. good so yes um but yeah luke and my is amazing as the lead um th- this is the, the you watching this movie to see this performance but also like the imagery the cinematography is mm. is beautiful yeah the way things are shot and the wall <laughs> like he shows the water and everything like the ocean and all that stuff and like and how italy and go- you go through these alleys and stuff and I know, you know the, it's, the, it's the 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 brick buildings and the like the laundry and the people coming out of the windows yeah. and looking it's just very timeless and it takes you to that place yeah. to and, the places in the and movie and that's sense. where the archival footage comes in right that's and it's I'm... just it gives you a sense of community and the italian culture and it's amazing right yeah and you feel the italian culture come out and that's why i really appreciate that because you because oftentimes i've seen italian films and you don't don't really really see you don't really see their culture it's just about the the story itself yeah and the people you don't really get to see the 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 thick of the people in a sense you know and so that's why i I really admire this film yeah so Mm. yeah yeah it was great it was great so yeah definitely we'll put the link down below where you could check it out um yeah it's a really damn good movie so yeah check out martin Eden and yeah um i don't know what else were we gonna say oh, that, was it, right? that was it um we <laughs> do want to invite you to um our live on instagram it's our first movie review live yes with, uh, maggie from pink leo production on instagram friday mm-hmm. at 7 p.m we will be talking about films with um the concept or I guess the, the story of the final girl. Yeah. Meaning horror films that end with the final girl as being a lead mm-hmm. and discussing those. And one of the films we'll be discussing is Scream. Yay! I'm excited. So, yeah. Again, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like. Uh, if you like tell this us if you, Yeah, do check out Martin Eden. If you've seen other foreign films that we should like review or check out if, that you like, them, right down yeah. below. Yeah, down so, below. And if you know the director, we would love to interview interview the director <laughs> or look if you know luca marinelli it's Is my it? now my new dream to meet him oh um, lord uh, he's an amazing actor um <laughs> i would like to interview him too so okay uh drop thanks. a line down below email us hit oh, us lord. up on instagram yeah do that do that but Are yeah so but on, on all this in all honesty sorry i you know i get lost with my words when i get too excited um Please, if you know of any film lovers or, you know, filmmakers and just love hearing about films, share our video with them or subscribe down below if you are one and you want to hear more. Yes. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Peace. Peace.